have something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, this is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is kind of where it all began, so to speak. Um, so it's there on your notes page. If you flip it over, uh, you'll see the definition. It says if uh, a function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and uh, so that's a key. Okay, your function has to be continuous to be able to do it this way. Uh, and f is an antiderivative on the interval from a to b, then the integral from a b of f of x is big F of b minus big F of x. We've gone over this before, okay? I just need to actually use this terminology that is referred to as the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know how to evaluate a definite integral, um, but its technical name is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, we're going to look at a couple of, of different examples. Mostly what we've done so far are power or, uh, polynomial functions using a power rule, um, but we can also deal with other types of functions, one of those being the absolute value. Now, we do have a derivative rule for the absolute value, but we really don't have an integral rule for the absolute value. So our best bet here is to write this as a piecewise function. Okay, so that's why I taught you guys this uh, back in pre-calculus. If we focus on just the absolute value part there, the absolute value of x can be expressed as, if you recall, we change the sign for the first one, we leave it the way it is for the second one, um, and we determine where it changes based on where this equals zero. Well, it equals zero at zero. So uh, the first part is less than zero, the second part is greater than zero, it doesn't matter where the equal t goes to. But we need to know those things in order to evaluate our definite integral here. So we're actually gonna split our definite integral into two pieces. Okay, it starts at negative 1. We're going to split it at 0 because that's where the absolute value of x changes. So we've got 1 minus from negative 1 to 0, the absolute value of x looks like negative x. Plus from 0 to the end of our interval, positive 1, the absolute value of x looks like just positive x. So we just have two definite integrals here to evaluate. Okay, so um, let's apply a power rule. The antiderivative of 1 is x. Subtracting that negative x is the same as adding x. So that's plus x squared over 2. We are going to evaluate this piece from negative 1 to 0 plus, we're going to find the antiderivative of the second piece. Antiderivative of 1 is x. The antiderivative of negative x would be minus x squared over 2. And that one is being evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, so our fundamental theorem of calculus says we plug in the upper limit first. So we've got 0 plus 0 squared over 2 minus, we plug in the lower limit, negative 1 plus, be careful with squaring negative numbers, negative 1 squared over 2. Plus, uh, plugging into the second one, top one that goes first, 1 minus 1 squared over 2 minus what we get when we plug in 0, which is 0. So, like I said, this part 0, this part 0. So let's see what we get here. We are subtracting this negative 1, so that's a positive 1. And we've got uh, negative 1 squared is positive 1 over 2, so that's 1 half but we're subtracting it. You've got to apply that negative. And then we've got plus 1 and uh, minus another half. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and negative 1 half minus 1 half is negative 1. So this answer is 1. So, a lot of work to get there. 
but that's how you would do one of those. Now, let me show you there are two ways that you can confirm a definite integral in your calculator. Now, if they put this on the exam, they're putting it on there to see if you understand the properties of absolute value functions and the ability to split up a definite integral. So it's going to be on the calculator inactive section. But if you're just working on, on homework or working on problems in, in class, you can use your calculator to um, check. Okay. So on your calculus calculator, menu F3 gives you all the calculus stuff. Integrate is the second option. Okay, so when you find that and you press enter, it brings up a little integrand. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in the function 1 minus the absolute value. Now your absolute value is still under the math menu, just like it is on the other calculator, but your math menu is second 5. And it's under number, but it's the second option under number, ABS for the parentheses. Close your parentheses after the X. Then you put a comma. What? Do you have a question? Okay. It is a lot of information. I would show you, but I can't, like, it doesn't pick up on the on the uh, projector there. So I may just have to come around to the groups individually. You got to tell it what variable to integrate with respect to. So you put a comma X. Then you press comma your lower limit, comma your upper limit, and close your parentheses. And the nice thing about this calculator is it does the pretty print thing, so it shows you exactly what the integral should look like. If you typed it incorrectly, it should look exactly like the problem, and it does indeed say that the answer is 1. Now, on the old calculator, you can also do this, but you have to do it through the graphing menu. So let me show you how to graph it. I don't know whether this calculator does it with the graphing or not. Um, but you type it into your y equals 1 minus math absolute value of x. And graph the function. So if you're wondering what it looks like, that's what it looks like. Uh, then you go to your calculate menu. Did anybody ever notice this way down here? We did stuff with like 1 through 4 or 1 through 5. But then it also has derivatives and integrals on there. Number 7, it asks you for the lower limit. So you type in negative 1, press enter. The upper limit, positive 1, press enter. It colors it in, and it tells you the answer is 1. Okay, so I do like this because it also gives you that visual representation that the definite integral is the area between the curve and the x-axis. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it does or not. I've never really uh, experimented with that. So, I mean, I could change my limits here. I can say from negative 3 to positive 2. Okay, just to illustrate, and it'll fill it in. See this negative area, positive area, negative area. So, this one actually has a negative answer because there's more area under the x-axis than there is above the x-axis, which we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about that later today as well and tomorrow. Okay? But, again, if they give you a problem like this, it's going to be on the calculator in an active, active section. So you do have to understand this stuff about the absolute value as piecewise functions. But I did want to show you how you can check it uh, on your calculator. Okay? Let's do another absolute value one to practice with it. Um, now, we've already done the work for splitting up the absolute value of x into a piecewise function. Um, so, we can kind of use that idea here for this uh, second example. This goes from negative 2 to 6, but we're still going to split it up at 0 because that's where the absolute value of x changes. Um, now, if that were the absolute value of x plus 1, then we would split it up at negative 1 because that's where the vertex of the absolute value of x plus 1 is. Um, but it's just absolute value of x. So, we've got x plus... For the left side of this, we change the sign. So x plus negative x plus the integral from 0 to 6 of x plus x. Well, that first part, x plus negative x, is just 0. So really, all we've got is um, x plus x, which is 2x. So when we take the antiderivative, that's x squared from 0 to 6, 
So we've got 6 squared minus 0 squared. So that is 36. So since I can show you on here, I'm going to let me change that to x plus the absolute value of x. Can you see what this graph looks like? It's kind of weird. Um, but this left part, think about it, up until we get to zero, that's what the left side of this looks like. It's x plus negative x, so that's always zero, so it just kind of appears out of nowhere here. So then if we calculate the integral from, I can still type in negative two, see where it put it, and then to six, it'll fill it in, and it tells me that it is 36. Okay. So I was saying, what if the problem looks like this? What if it were from negative 2 to 6 of x plus x plus 1? Okay, This um, absolute value function looks like this. Yeah, this is less than negative 1. Remember we set what's inside the absolute value equal to 0. So this one changes at negative 1. So our integral would split up at negative 1. It would change a positive one. Okay? All right, so just a little crash course a reminder there are those piecewise functions with absolute values. Okay, one more example, and then I'm going to let you just do a bunch of practice here. Okay? Uh, find the area of the region bounded by the graph of y equals 1 over x and the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals 1 and x equals e. So they don't give us the integral, but they're describing the integral to us. They're saying find the area of the region. So that should make you think integrate. Okay, If you see area of the region, you should think integrate. Bounded by the graph of 1 over x. So that means that's my function. I am integrating 1 over x. And the vertical lines, x equals 1 and x equals e, that's telling me what my limits are or what my bounds are. I start at 1 and I stop at e, which is approximately 2.7 something. Um, so it's bigger than 1. Okay, And we put a dx on it. All right, <clears throat> so um, if we were to try and use our power rule here, let's talk about that for a second. We would rewrite that as x to the negative 1, but if we add 1 to that, we get 0, and we're supposed to divide by our new exponent. We can't divide stuff by 0. Okay, so this is not a power rule. We've got to think about this more in terms of, okay, which function's derivative is 1 over x? The natural log. Okay, The natural log, its derivative is 1 over x. So when we integrate, this is the natural log of x, and we're going to evaluate it from 1 to e. So that means we've got the natural log of e minus the natural log of 1. We've got to use some properties of logarithms. We've got to remember, okay, so what does this mean? Okay, the natural log, its base is e, so remember logarithmic form is representing an exponential expression. That's saying e to some power is e. So what is that power? 1, okay. Then it's saying e to some power is 1. 0, very good. The log, any log of 1, the answer is 0. Common log, log base 2, log base 8, log base anything of 1 is 0. Yes, sir. Um, instead of the uh, integral, yes. Like when you put the word problem and they're not really showing you, you should always put the bigger value on top. Now they may give you one, they may set up one and have a bigger value on the bottom, then you just roll with it. Uh, but if they don't tell you, then you assume it's smaller than the bottom, bigger than the bottom. You can. 
You can. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that tomorrow or later on today. It depends. But we're going to talk about it. 